Kathy Wood was just on TV to discuss her $1,400 2027 Tesla stock price target in her bear case. Let's dive in. Uh, you know, the traders and I were, were talking here on the desk about Tesla and how your bear case for Tesla is $1,400 a share. Guy here said he'd take $1,400 because that's still pretty bullish. What What is in, let's just even say the bear case, what assumptions are made about its business to get to that $1,400 uh, by 27 number? Well, about a third of our valuation is associated with electric vehicles, EVs, and scaling them. And as, uh, as you mentioned, Turkey, a plant there, uh, you know, many countries do want uh, a Tesla plant because is, this is the new world, right? Uh, so that's good. This is all working out. And then the then two thirds of our valuation is around autonomous and uh, autonomous taxi platforms. Uh, we think Tesla is in the pole position here in the United States. It has collected more data about our roads and actually other roads around the world uh, than all of the other uh, companies combined. And therefore, it has more corner cases and probably will be the company that will get people from point A to point B as quickly and safely as possible. So it's a winner take most market. I absolutely 100% agree with Kathy Wood here overall. And Elon said recently that, and his team, that they don't just need a lot of data, they need good data. If you have a lot of bad drivers, yeah, that's not really going to help. So Tesla needs data from the best drivers and Tesla needs all of these edge cases. But the only way to really get those is if you have a lot of cars on the road and Tesla has so many cars on the road. Tesla just produced its five millionth vehicle. And it also appears to me that with a new approach that Tesla is using, the end-to-end -end approach, I think with that approach, Tesla actually needs even more data than how much data they thought before they actually need. And that's probably one of the reasons why Tesla just cut the price of full self-driving. However, I'm not naive. I think that price cut also indicates very clearly to me as a Tesla stock investor that Tesla does not think that at least in the next six months or so, that Tesla will actually solve full self-driving, meaning full self-driving would be safer than human driving. So whether it's our base case, uh, it just that just means, okay, autonomous uh, perhaps takes a little longer to play out, uh, or the bull case, it happens much more quickly. I personally modeled Tesla stock until 2033. I'll share a few snippets from my valuation model. I have six cases for myself, and not in every single one of them, I assume that full self driving is going to be solved to a point where it's actually safer than human driving. But generally, overall, if you just assume a certain rate of progress with full self driving, knowing that technologies typically get better exponentially, especially as we get more data, I can't make a logical argument that makes sense that would say that in the long term, this is not going to work. I mean, we got Chad GPT writing better articles than most people could, better poems. I actually uh, find Chad GPT to be more useful than Google. The Chad GPT 4 version, Chad GPT 3, it sucks, but the Chad GPT 4 version, it's pretty good actually, although you, you gotta pay for it. And that seemingly just came out of nowhere. So it's really inevitable, it's just a matter of time before full self driving gets solved. The question is when, but to me as an investor, really, there's not much of a difference between full self driving. I mean, there obviously there is a, a difference, but fundamentally, would I be invested in Tesla stock or not? That question would not be answered differently. Whether Tesla solves full self driving in 2024 or 25 or 2029. Because if Tesla can't solve it sooner, that means other companies also can't solve it sooner. I am completely convinced that Tesla will be the first company to solve full self driving because it has the most data. But by that, I mean the first company that will actually be able to scale its fleet quickly because you can, I mean, full self driving in some ways is already solved in San Francisco if you use HD maps. I'm talking about a version of full self driving that actually scales. So Tesla, I believe it'll be the first company to actually do that. So even the, the 
if it takes longer to play out, it's still 1,400. Um, and, and that sort of that seems extremely optimistic in terms of even the regulatory um, green lights that Tesla would need for autonomy. It seems also, you know, that the model where Tesla owners would own their cars and then they would go out and earn them money during the day yeah. by driving people around, that also seems sort of optimistic uh, in terms of the uptake of that, Kathy. So, you know, for two-thirds of the valuation, do you feel like that there's risk even around the bear case at all with the two-thirds? Well, it, um Actually, the risks are going down because regulators are very data driven. I absolutely 100% agree with what Kathy Wood just said here, and she's not making things up. I actually have something that will back it up. So remember this letter from Nitsa that it sent to Elon and everyone was starting to freak out and the bear said, oh, this is proof that Tesla autopilot and full self driving is not happening because now the regulators are coming in and they will make it really difficult for Elon and Tesla. Well, if you actually read what was said, you would have a very different conclusion because here's what Kevin said. He summarized this perfectly. Uh, the letter, the full letter is insanely bullish. On page 11 of the demand, the letter states, describe in detail any lessons learned and or findings from driving the vehicles with the subject software Elon mode enabled. They are literally giving Elon Musk the opportunity to respond with positive information about the Tesla nag being off. That's what the whole thing was about. The, the, um, the Elon Musk mode supposedly turns off the nag, so maybe you don't need to pay attention, perhaps, which the regulator was worried about. But of course, the regulators also, they want to know how do you turn this mode on? How many cars have the ability to turn it on? How many have turned it on? But to go further and say, but hey, while you're at it, has it helped? What did you learn in your study? The NITSA is extremely interested in autopilot in a good way. This is not a regulator trying to shut Elon and Tesla down. This is a regulator who sees the benefits of saving lives with autopilot. Incredibly reasonable and exciting opportunity for Tesla. The letter, if Elon mode proves useful, could actually be the beginning of the end of the Tesla autopilot next and proof that the regulators actually will embrace the autopilot and full self-driving. So I agree with Kevin's assessment here that this is a holy smokes moment. Up until roughly now, you know, I, I was a bit more bearish on the things on the regu regulatory side, especially with Elon saying certain things politically and making a certain party in the US upset. It didn't seem great, but I mean, it's like the opposite thing is happening of what you would expect to happen. These people are actually relatively reasonable. And what regulators have been experiencing, especially in the transportation sector, is that the number of auto deaths in the United States have gone up, has gone up during the past five to 10 years from 30,000 to 45,000 after decades of falling thanks to auto safety measures. So the National Highway and Transportation Safety Board and other transportation authorities want to turn that trend back down. Why has it happened? A lot of it is because of texting and therefore a disproportionate number of young people are dying in auto, auto uh, accidents. So the data supports what Tesla is doing. 80 to 90% of all accidents on the roads are caused by human error. If you take the human being out of the equation uh, and, um, and use AI to get people from point A to point B as safely, as quickly as possible, um, I think the, the, the authorities, the regulators, are going to be persuaded by the data. In fact, they already have been in terms of the fatalities in, uh, in Tesla's cars. They examine them. They say, not Tesla's fault for the most part. And oh, by the way, uh, people driving in Tesla cars are 40% plus safer uh, with autopilot and FSD than mm -hmm. in other cars. Yep, absolutely 100% right. Also, every single investigation 
it's basically the same. There's an investigation, there is a lot of drama from the media, and then the results come back from the regulators, from the investigators, saying, oh, uh, it was not Tesla's fault. It was the driver's fault. Like this one right here, drunk driver of semi-autonomous Tesla crashed into police a police car after 150 warnings the drunk driver received 150 warnings to put their hands back on the steering wheel before crashing into a police car injuring six people every investigation pretty much comes to very similar results where tesla is exonerated although the media doesn't really acknowledge that because it doesn't get as many clicks, it does not get as much attention. So some consumers still have the bad impression, but the truth is, regulators, when they look at this, and they investigated so many, and they know, oh, yeah, yeah the next one is probably also, uh, there's nothing to see here, really. Probably it's going to be fine again, just like all of the other times, and they keep seeing this over and over and over again. I think that actually helps Tesla in some way because regulators are getting experience with Tesla vehicles. And they see that in this particular case, for example, it warned the driver 150 times before the driver actually eventually crashed. Obviously, that's not the fault of Tesla. And if you like to see my Tesla valuation model, including all of my assumptions together with all of the Tesla stock prices that I would be willing to pay each year for Tesla stock between 2023 and 2033. If you'd like to see that, uh, click on the link in the description of this video. It will take you to my Patreon where you will also be able to see exclusive videos. For example, I just posted this warning, uh, which should be viewed before September 20th. And I just recorded this video the biggest mistake I see Tesla stock investors make. I'm aiming to post about a video a day this month, every day. I want to thank again to all of my Patreon supporters and thank you so much for watching this video.